This module is part of the Canadian Injury Prevention Curriculum. Audio is required for an enhanced learning experience. Throughout the module, you can access the glossary by clicking the upper left-hand corner in the toolbar above the video and the resources below the video. If at any time you are confused, stuck, or need help, you can click on the upper right-hand corner in the toolbar above the video. Welcome to the Program and Policy Implementation Module for Injury Prevention Practitioners. This module will provide you with a basic understanding of how to develop an action plan for implementing an injury prevention intervention. As you remember from the CIPC lessons, the public health approach consists of defining the injury problem, identifying risk and protective factors, and selecting an intervention to reduce the injury burden. Implementation is the fourth stage of the public health approach. However, laying the groundwork for implementation planning occurs throughout the entire process. This module contains a glossary that can be accessed anytime. The glossary contains terms and definitions that will be used throughout the module. If, at any time during the module, you would like to review a term's definition, this glossary can be accessed on the upper left tab in the toolbar above this video on the page where the resources are. By the end of this module, you will understand how important it is to plan the implementation of a program and you have developed your own implementation action plan. There are four main components of implementation, all of which we will take a closer look at later in the module. The four main components are 1. A well-planned implementation strategy using an action plan 2. Maintaining the fidelity of the evidence-based prevention strategy you are implementing. 3. Adapting the intervention for new populations and settings. And 4. Making sure there is an effort to measure and increase sustainability of your implemented program. Developing an implementation strategy is a non-linear process. Stages can be skipped and revisited at a later date. For example, a working group may be formed at the beginning and then updated with more knowledge users throughout the process. Unanticipated events may affect the success of the program. To map the process and supports needed, practitioners or researchers can develop an implementation action plan. A key element of the implementation strategy is defining and setting your plan. An action plan assists implementers to visually think about the necessary inputs that support the intervention, the core activities that are markers of success of the program, and the resulting outputs. It is important to consider the formative or pre-planning activities, the process or the success of implementing core components of the program as they were intended, and outcome indicators or the effectiveness of the program. Here is an example of an action plan. Let's walk through it together. We will start with the formative indicators, action slash activities. We will be implementing a sport injury prevention program in youth soccer, target group, youth recreation soccer players, timelines and responsibilities. In year one, we will have discussions with the target population and engage coaches and parents in dialogue. In year two, creative design companies will develop promo materials, resources, we will need funding for focus groups, promotional material development, and access to an assessment of existing capacity. Indicators. We have finished the action plan if we have established the need for the program and the fit of the program within the existing soccer program. Also, if we have the resources required and the capacity and readiness for change. Now, let's look at the process indicators for the Youth Soccer Sport Injury Prevention Program. Action slash activities and target group are the same as the previous slide. Timelines and responsibilities. In year one, facilitators will run training workshops and coaches will attend workshops and provide feedback. Resources. The resources needed are the coach's time, the program facilitator's time, and funding for focus groups. Indicators. The indicators of completion will be the components that have been implemented, the resources used to support implementation, 
and the decision to adopt the program. Finally, we will look at the outcome indicators for the Youth Soccer Sport Injury Prevention Program. Action slash activities and target group will still be the same. Timelines and responsibilities. In year two, data collection personnel will be needed for all established program outcomes. Resources. The resources needed are research assistance to collect ongoing data. Indicators. The indicator of a successful program will be a reduction in injury in the training group. A key component to a successful implementation strategy is establishing who is a part of the implementation team. Coordinating an implementation team and working group should be one of the first activities when thinking about implementing a program or policy. This is the team that will develop the action plan. The implementation team should be made up of at least three partners who have expertise in A. The field of injury the program relates to B. Undertaking innovative program implementation C. Knowledge of implementation science slash theory and or D. Use of implementation in practice and or organization and system changes. From our previous example of youth soccer, identify the partners and collective areas of expertise required for this implementation team. It is also a good idea to invite organizational supports to the team, such as A. A practitioner or individual with expertise in the injury of interest. B. Management to lend leadership and knowledge on policy information, for example liability. C. Administration to assist with human resources and structural issues. D. Representatives from a healthcare sector or other sector to play a lead role and discuss mandates related to the program. Or E. Regional authority, provincial, community, federal, and national supports as they can advise on a variety of perspectives. A working group complements the implementation team and can consist of A. Implementation team members B. Experts in the area of injury prevention C. Stakeholders D. Knowledge users or E. Community members Working groups provide valuable information, including constructive criticism to inform and tailor the program. If you recall, Earlier in the module, I highlighted fidelity as a key component of implementation. Fidelity is essentially the degree to which a program is implemented as intended by program developers. It identifies the necessary components of a program to ensure effectiveness, as identified in the literature. Another key component is adaptation. From an earlier stage in the public health approach, we learned that best practice is to choose an existing evidence-based prevention strategy. Often, the strategy identified would have been implemented in a population other than the population you have. Therefore, it will need to be adapted. It is very important to document all the steps that were taken to adapt a program such as the environment, staff, capacity and demands, resources available, staff, equipment, materials, administrative process, the setting, and risk profile of the population. The last key component of implementation is sustainability. Factors that support and impede sustainability are important to think about as it provides practitioners with the necessary information to understand the context in which a program continues or does not continue after implementation efforts are complete. When developing an action plan or any implementation plan, here are a few tips to keep in your back pocket. 1. Determine specific dates for program implementation. 2. Communicate clearly the program protocol in the event of gaps, challenges, and barriers during implementation. 3. Establish leadership engagement to sustain the program. 4. Schedule regular meetings, phone calls, or emails to maintain communication for ongoing feedback and opportunities for any changes to the implementation plan. 5. Monitor the implementation process to assess if the program should be continued or modified and any implications for that modification. To do so, consider the programs A. 
perceived usefulness by all involved individuals, b. Time allocation, and c. Sustainability, both internally and externally, and what resources would be necessary. It is time to put your knowledge to the test. Think about an injury prevention program slash initiative you want to implement. Complete the components of the action plan. Once you are finished, you have the option to email the completed version to yourself and colleagues, save it on your computer for a later date, or print off a copy for your records using the tools in the toolbar. Whatever you decide, press Submit once you have finished. Here you will find some recommended resources and readings on implementation if you would like some further information. There are two parts to the module evaluation. The first is intended to assess if you have shifted your readiness to tackle program slash policy implementation. It's comprised of two question groups. Each ask how you felt at the start of the module, prior to the beginning, and how you feel now that you have completed the module. The final question of the self-evaluation is an exercise aimed at behavior change. Congratulations! You have completed this module.